You are listening to From Ring to Veil. I'm Shannon. And I'm Kim. And we are your wedding planning gurus. We take the stress out and put the fun back into wedding planning. Wedding Websites, Designers, and Trends, episode number 169. Please take a second and subscribe to the show. You can subscribe right there in that little podcast app that you're listening to us in. Uh, or you can find us at fromringtovail.com and uh, listen to us there. Share us if you love us. Do you know somebody that's getting married or that might be getting married or just loves to plan their wedding? Let them know that we're here. We would love to help them out too. Please share and subscribe. Also, please join our Facebook group. The From Ring to Veil Wedding Planning Community is an awesome place to get advice from other brides, other wedding planning couples, vendors. They're all in there. They're here to help you. So if you have questions, ask. We ask. Sometimes the questions will make it on the show. So beware of that. But don't forget our Facebook page page just not our group our facebook page has hit over 1000 likes and we are so so happy about that hey <laughs> it's really fun yeah and it, we're getting famous yeah, we are we're getting very <laughs> popular around here but anyway <laughs> and in celebration of our 1000 likes we are doing a giveaway Woohoo! it's not quite set up yet look for yeah. it it's coming coming soon right Next, we have uh, our wedding timelines and checklists. It's um, 20 plus pages of downloaded goodness that you can check off and write on and, and highlight and mark off and know exactly what you need in order to plan your wedding. There are wedding ceremony timelines, wedding planning timelines for the groom, bride and groom emergency kits so you know exactly what you need in those kits ceremony outline and more i think you'll love it and it's it's for the low low price of 2.99 so it's really worth it go to from ring to slash checklists and find it there so this is episode number 169 yes we have recorded this episode this will be the third time we have recorded this episode <laughs> let me explain something <laughs> sometimes in podcasting things happen technology sucks <laughs> no just technology mm -hmm. it, it happens and sometimes your episode that you recorded just ghosts you and it's gone and you'd have no idea where it is i mean i could have put shannon's side up but that probably wouldn't have made yeah, much sense and, you know, so. me talking the whole time about uh what <laughs> again <laughs> and gasping and laughing half the time i don't think that would work very uh, well but because we love you guys so very much we are redoing this for a third time because <laughs> it's a fun show it's i think it's informative hmm. so there you go <laughs> and in this episode we got a little bit of everything we got wedding websites what you need to know about those and what you need to put what on you those need to include. yeah yeah um, wedding designers, like who's heard of wedding designers and trends, fun trends for uh, for the 2018. Mm -hmm. So uh, I say let's get to it. This episode brought to you by Appy Couple, the most stylish way to share your wedding. You choose your design, then tell your story. Add and edit photos of your life together from the beginning. Choose your tribe, your maids and men. Lay out all the events and details to organize everyone easily. When, where, child care, weather, and how to get there. Your guests can join in on the website and your very own app. From reading your stories to adding their own photos. And of course, you have veto power. They can get all the event details to the ones that they are invited to. They can also start and join conversations. They can find links to your registries. Available for Apple and Android devices. Go to fromringtovail.com slash appy. That's from ringtovail.com slash A-P-P-Y. Wedding websites. They could be very, very scary. Because you look at a website and you wonder, how do they get all of that content mm -hmm. in there? And mm -hmm. it's scary because there's a bunch of code back in behind it that does all of it. That's right? true. But there are companies out there who make it easy for you. All you have to do is put your stuff in. 
and they take care of all the coding and crap. Mm -hmm. And make it look all pretty yeah. for you. You just input information. One of those companies is our sponsor, Zola. You can go to Zola.com slash FRTV and get your very own free mm -hmm. wedding website. So, Kim, what do we include on this wedding website? Oh, so much. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Make it make it simple, but please include everything that your guests needs to know. That's the main important thing for this. Keep it simple, but include everything so you're not having to answer a bunch of questions. Really, it can save your butt on that. First thing is how to get to the ceremony. Do you need directions? Is it easy to find? Is it difficult to find? Do you turn at the third left after the McDonald's the tree? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. So make it clear as you can those uh, yeah. directions to get to the ceremony. Landmarks are great because of the, the, mm -hmm. the directionally challenge, i.e. me. <laughs> Don't know north, south, east, or west when you're on the road. I have to... When I drive, if I'm, which we don't ever use paper maps anymore, but when we used to use no. paper maps before the GPS came along, I had to turn mm -hmm. the map around to the which way I was going. So I figure out which way oh. I went. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which our GPS does that yeah. for us. So, so I mean, that's nice. why I love my GPS because it turns when I do. You specifically, you know, because sometimes GPSs still have hard times with, with addresses. Mm -hmm. So, if it's one of those type of venues, please include like written directions. Some of your older people, they're going to want written directions anyway. So. <laughs> or coordinates. Just keep that in mind. You know, use, yeah, you use satellite go. coordinates, <sighs> latitude and longitude. Secondly, you need to let them know how they're getting to the ceremony. Do they need to drive? Um, do they, are they catching a bus or a party bus or are you limoing everybody there? Let them know how that's how that's going to happen, too. You need to put on there what time the ceremony starts. And sometimes I would put on, please do not arrive before. But, you know, that's kind of rude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because there has been times when Kim and I have been setting up a wedding and we look back and half the seats are filled. Yeah. And we're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. you know, when we set up, when we used to set up weddings, we didn't look pretty. So, you know. <laughs> Hey, speak for yourself. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you set them up and it's hot and we're all hot and sweaty. And yeah, that's true. Kind of yeah, stinky, yeah. but, you know. <laughs> and it's, yeah, I mean, or have a place for them to wait. You know, there's a place, a waiting area mm -hmm. here or there. But I do, I like that. Please do not show up before <laughs> at a certain time. But you, but you're right, because there's vendors running everywhere yeah. trying to get everything in I place. Mean, and, you know, usually the plan, if they're having a planner there, she's in her grubbies, too, before she changes into True. a nice outfit. And she doesn't want to be meeting these people and mm -hmm. giving them info with, uh, with her grubbies on. Give your guests an idea of what to wear. Is this a black tie? Is it a cocktail? Um, cocktail? Yeah. Is it, you know, shorts and flip flops? <laughs> what 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 do they wear? Let them know. And you need to put a timeline in there. What time, like we said, what time they need to get there, what time the ceremony starts, you know, how long the ceremony lasts, what's in the ceremony. This could be a timeline or it could be a program, you know, something. If there is a waiting period between the ceremony and the reception, what do they need to do between there? Are they going to be shuttled to the reception? You know, all of this needs to be... Yeah. It's a lot of info, but these people need to know because if you don't tell them, they don't know where to go, for one thing. They don't know how long it takes right. to get there. And some people will leave. <laughs> That's true. They'll think, oh, well, I don't have to be here, yeah. so I'll leave. And, you know, if you have a cocktail hour, great. Put that on there. Also, if it's a cash bar, which I know Shannon hates, <laughs> if there is a cash bar, you need to let them know so they can bring some cash. Hopefully they take credit, but, you know. Is there a hotel block of rooms for your out-of-town guest? Tell them what they need to ask for when they call for a reservation. You, do they need to do it under your name or whatever? Just let them know what they need to do when they call. Any other transportation information? Um, maybe they can't actually park where the ceremony is. They have to park in a different lot and be shuttled. Just let them know what's, what's happening with the transportation. Put your registry options on there. You know, you don't want to get a bunch of the same things. You want them to use your registry. You know, we're registered here, here, and here. In mm -hmm. lieu of gifts, we have a honeymoon fund set up or a house fund set up or a charity fund set up. You know, 
You can do yeah. those. It's not taboo anymore to ask for money. And this is your wedding website. So it's not your your official invitation. So it's not like it's there's a specific way to have to do that. Plus, what's really nice is they can just click at the registry right there on the website and it takes them right there and they can take care of it very easily. Mm. I love See, technology is good sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you need to list who they need to contact with questions. Is that the maid or matron of honor, your wedding planner, your mom, his mom? Just let them know who to ask when they have questions. If you have out-of-town guests, they need to know what's around in the area of their hotel. Where do they eat? Where do they go do, you know, if they're going to spend the weekend there, they're going to have to have something to do on the days that they're not at your wedding. What do they do? Mm -hmm. Where do they visit? You know, if they can't get into the room block that you reserve, where else can they stay? Hashtag information. Do you guys have a hashtag? Put it there so they can start using that. It, you know, you they can use it pre-wedding mm -hmm. too. And if the ceremony is unplugged, let them know. Hey, we're we're requesting no uh, cell phones or Re iPads. Recording devices. <laughs> oh, extra cameras, whatever. Just Just let them know. And then they then they know not to either bring it or leave it in the car or turn it off or whatever it is. <laughs> also, put your story on there, how you came to be a couple. Add photos to that because they want to see your face, especially if people don't know your story, your distant relatives. That way you're not answering the questions. How did you meet all <laughs> night? <laughs> Look on the website. No. Didn't you read my website? Exactly. Don't you know who we are? <laughs> Um, RSVP options. This is a perfect place for them to be able to RSVP and you don't have to call and, and ask them if they're coming and what they want to eat right there. Easy as pie. Just fill it out right mm -hmm. there. So those are the most important things you need to have. You can add more stuff. Like you said, more to your story, more to your, your pictures and things like that. There's, you can put a lot more on your wedding website. So this is what the basics that you need to have so that your guests are prepared for the wedding. You know, let's say you're having a goodbye brunch the next day. You could also put that option here. Yep. And they could also say if they're coming or if maybe their flight's already leaving or whatever it is. So wedding websites are just a, an awesome deal. I wish we had those when <laughs> we barely even had the internet when I was getting Mary, it was so. the dial up and it was most likely AOL. Oh jeez, yes, it certainly was. We just hated had a ourselves. <laughs> hey, they know we both been married for about 20 I years. I know. All right, so before we move on, let's hear a little message about our sponsor. zola.com. If you go to zola.com/frtv, you can get a $50 credit towards your registry. We've talked wow. about them before. You know we love them. Zola Registry has everything that you love about your favorite department store, plus things like honeymoon funds, fitness classes, wine subscriptions, and so much more. Right. And it's free and it's easy to use. How nice would that have been? And how fun would that have been to just mm -hmm. be able to go to a website like Zola? And click instead of going around with that little gun everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Or the person trailing behind you with a piece of paper. Because, you know, back then, right. it's less stressful and very much more enjoyable. That's right. They have group gifting. It's a feature that lets multiple guests contribute to a big gift. You know, like you pick something big and let's say somebody can't afford the whole thing, but they can put money towards it and somebody else can put money towards it. I love that. You can also personalize your registry with photos and notes about what you really need, what you want. And it also has a free suite of wedding planning tools, including free websites. That mm -hmm. is one of the number one reasons why you would want to do this is that free wedding website because it keeps right. it all combined right there for you. There's your registry. There's your website. People can log on, get everything, and they can do it from their phone. They can do it from their PC. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So to sign up and to receive your $50 credit, you have to go to Zola.com slash FRTV. That's Zola, Z-O-L-A dot com slash FRTV. Wedding designers, what are they? Well, <laughs> I asked that question when I saw that. I saw somebody uh, had posted something about wedding. I'm like, wedding designers? I don't know what a wedding planner and coordinator day of is. They're basically a wedding stylist or an architect or a designer 
and they only take care of the aesthetics and they don't do things like con- uh, contract negotiations or set up appointments and stuff like that. They're just there to make it look beautiful. They make it cohesive. Yes. They put all your elements that you really, really like and they put them all together and they make it come out beautiful. We have a link in the show notes from ringtoveil.com slash 169 or right there on your podcasting app to some great information about wedding designers. But here is what a wedding designer does. They put in up to 40 hours of work on your wedding alone. They create the design concept and they give you color palette guidance, which a lot of us need because sometimes we pick colors that don't really go well together. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I just love that. Okay. They oversee the decor budget and vendors like the florist, lighting. Uh, They may even even be with your uh, stationer is what they're called is is a word. It's basically the person that does all your paper stuff. Mm -hmm. They might go with you on those visits with those vendors to kind of help guide you and help you. Like you said, keep everything cohesive in the right colors, in the right fonts, all of that. Um, They also are able to source special props and equipment that you may not be able to find. Yeah, if you're having an extreme, like, themed wedding, like, you and your significant other have this love for a certain movie or a certain fandom fandom that you love, they can source all of this stuff then to make it into your dream fandom wedding. So Mm -hmm. They attend the site visit, like, your final walkthrough. They'll go through... And they will devise a layout and identify problems like, hey, this door is going to be blocked. We need to block it from the outside as well or whatever. Then they can figure mm-hmm. all that out. They will, in, in in that, create a detailed floor plan where everything goes. I imagine wedding designers are very detailed, <laughs> which for me is really good because I like to see all that. They also ensure that all of the decor elements are in place and on site at the wedding. So they'll be there to make sure everything looks perfect. Right. They will probably coordinate with all of your your floral designer, your linen person, your rental person, people. Mm-hmm. If you have like pipe and drape or you have lighting being, they will coordinate with all of those vendors. Here are some reasons to hire a wedding designer. If the decor is the most important element of your wedding, then that's probably a good time to hire a wedding designer. You're confident in your organizational and logistical skills, but your creative skills are lacking. If you're more, what is it? If you're if you're more left brain, you have more rational thoughts and you're more, you know, organized and you make lists. <laughs> but your creative side, your right brain is don't, you know, you don't really use that a lot. That's a good way. It's a good idea to hire a wedding designer. And lastly, if you're trying to pull off a, like Shannon was saying, a very specific theme, you have a million wedding idea style ideas and you can't narrow it down. Your Pinterest page is a mess. Um, Then you need somebody to help guide you through all that. Hire a wedding designer. Okay. Let's move on to trends. This is exciting. I'm, uh, I, I love Pinterest. We love Pinterest. You guys know that. Pinterest has released its 2018 Pinterest wedding report. It includes things like beauty and style and hair and food and more. So we thought we would share some of that stuff with you. The hair and beauty section is awesome. (laughs) You like it? Well, yeah, because I... I'm not one that makes up my face very, I mean, I don't spend an hour contouring and shadowing and shading and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I put on my BB cream in the morning, some, you know, a little bit of blush, some mascara and lip gloss, and I'm out the door. And half the time, my hair is on a knot in the top of my head, you know? Right. (laughs) So I don't do all of that. I don't do fake lashes. I get my eyebrows plucked every once in a while, but I don't do like fake lashes. I don't color them in or anything. So I like the fresh face look. It says here that brides are saying I do to messy updo. And Mm -hmm. yes, they're messy updos, but they're also styled that way. It's not like they just 
pulled them up and then left them. They actually did right. some curling ironing and pinning and things like that to make it look messy. Yeah. Um, it's really pretty and natural. Mm-hmm. And all their faces glow. Mm-hmm. They're not all matte finished. Barely their shine. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do have cor- long lashes, though. Yeah, they do have fake lashes on, but they're not like, ah, fake lashes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're Absolutely. more naturally, they're more natural fake lashes. What What's kind of funny to me is, so on their little descriptions here on P- the Pinterest report, they have things like plus 1,247%. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Of what? I, I guess that means that their pens, Messy Abdu's penned, mm-hmm. increased a hundred one thousand two hundred forty seven percent okay that makes sense i was gonna say because out of a hundred that just doesn't make sense okay yeah okay but their messy updo pens increased in volume okay okay and of course hair combs seem to be a big thing hair pieces and side wa- soft waves and side parts which my hair normally does in a side part mm-hmm. so it just <laughs> well you would fit right in if you're getting married all right, let's mm. move on to style. High necklines and boleros. Yeah. Bolero jackets, toppers. We, like we talked about that. That, yeah. that was coming, the little capelets and stuff like that. Mm. So we were right. It says jumpsuits. Yes, I see a few jumpsuits. And it, what does it say? Uh, plus 178%. So people yeah. are liking the jumpsuits. Maybe they don't want to go too dressy. Of course, these yeah. jumpsuits are pretty dressy. And it's... Yeah. And I can see them maybe for the reception. Maybe you don't yeah, want to yeah. wear, you know, your big poofy dress for mm-hmm. the whole reception. You can put on a jumpsuit. That's okay. <laughs> Sleeves <laughs> and flats are also making it easy to Yay! dance. <laughs> and walk. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Rose champagne dresses. They're on the rise. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, capes. we said capes. Yep. Backdrop necklaces, which is kind of cool if you have a bare back dress. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it just makes sense. I, I've seen a lot of things where they do shoulder shoulder jewelry now uh-huh. too. I've seen they that look too. like the Queen of the Cleopatra or something. <laughs> I don't. It's cool. It though. seems heavy to me. I don't know. Yeah. It, it, well, I guess you could make it lighter i guess mm. but i think that's neat it's it's different you know it's unique yeah and then for the guys tweed suits maybe <laughs> here yes i don't know in down in the south where it's hot uh, no but i see a lot of navy i like navy mm-hmm. it, that that is really pretty and bow ties and even tie tie free suspenders you know things like that mm-hmm. it just depends on your again your dress if you're going black tie or not so next is jewelry, engagement rings to be more specific. And moissanites is becoming more popular. Mm-hmm. You know, it looks like a diamond. It shines like a diamond. It sparkles like a diamond, but it doesn't cost like a diamond. <laughs> Which I think is why it's on the rise. Yeah. It's really pretty. Then, you can't hardly yeah. tell. Mm-mm. And then art deco designs, which, you know, me, I love. I have an art deco wedding ring that was my grandmother's. So it's very vintage and old. And I love it. That's right. And then oval stones. Oval stones. I think also more colored stones are coming into the rings as well. Because I've been seeing a lot of rubies and sapphires and emeralds and wedding band sets and things like that, too. So I love that. But. I really think that's pretty. I mean, mm-hmm. I like when it's, of course, the diamond or the, the clear stone in, in the middle, and then you've got mm-hmm. the different colors yeah. around. I really like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's more of a wedding look. Yeah. A wedding ring look. So now on to food. Food. Woohoo. Um, pizza. Pizza's yeah. on the rise. Fancy plated dinners are on the way out. They're too stuffy. They're, you know, formal. People want to eat pizza and salad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's more party food anyway, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, vegan wedding food is on the rise. I assume that we have more vegans being vocal about being vegans mm-hmm. nowadays. So mm-hmm. that makes sense to me. Pretzel bars are on the increase. So With crazy. all the dipping sauces for the pretzels. I don't really like that. 
I don't like pretzels that much. They're all right. I I wouldn't want it on just my food. I mean, I have a, you get a hankering for one every once in a while, like mm-hmm. one of those from Auntie Anne's or whatever it is. And, but then you've got the cheese sauces, and then you've got the caramel sauces, and you got a chocolate sauce. I mean, you can mm. midnight midnight snacks are on the rise too, which you know is awesome. Yeah, we're all people for that. are hungry. Yeah, people are <laughs> hungry at the end of the night because the food's all gone, and you've been dancing away all night long. Mm-hmm. Give them some grilled cheese. At the end of the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> yes to all that. <laughs> or breakfast tacos. That would be, yeah. that, be a Texas thing. Breakfast tacos. I think that's great. Because, you know, I remember when I was younger and we'd, you know, stay up late. There was always a place to get a breakfast taco. You know, <laughs> midnight or one o'clock in the morning. Probably wasn't the best. Truck stops. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know about that. Hey. <laughs> Maybe about where you lived. <laughs> That was about the only thing open around two o'clock in the morning was truck stops. So that's funny. And they had good food. So So let's talk a little bit about decor, making your guests happy campers with camp weddings. That's on the rise. And guess what? (laughs) We're going to have a show about camp weddings. (laughs) In a couple of weeks. Yeah. Playing wedding games, Jenga uh, guest books. It seems like they're they're bringing more fun stuff in the weddings. Hmm. Cornhole. <laughs> oh, beanbag toss. Whatever. It's the same It's thing. cornhole. <laughs> Entrances. Make a one of a kind entrance. This says boats or scooters. I don't know if I'd want to do that because I'd be afraid I'd get wet and yeah. my hair would be blowing everywhere. But... Well, you could just tie a nice little. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Also, it says courthouse ceremonies are on the rise. Yeah. So make it simple and easy. Do a courthouse ceremony and then go have a nice, awesome party. Yes, absolutely. A lot of potted plants for your decor, Mm -hmm. like herbs and boxwoods and suspended flowers are up on the rise. Floral cocktails. We like the suspended flowers. We've done that a few times. That's really kind of fun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, floral cocktails. Yeah, I don't know. know. Single stem bouquets are awesome. You get a large statement flower. That's all you need. You don't need anything else. And minimal arrangements for your tables and stuff, which, you know, hey, that's yeah. fine. You don't have to do a whole lot to make it pretty. So those are just a few of the things that are on this uh, Pinterest wedding trends report. There will be a link on the show notes from ringtoval.com slash 169 or right there on your app to this wedding report. So you can get into it more details if you want to. But we just thought it was uh, it was really cool to see what people are pinning. I've mm-hmm. always thought... I wonder what people are actually pinning the most. And here here it is. Pinterest has <laughs> let us know. I know like the more something gets pinned, the more it gets seen, that kind of stuff. So I don't really know how all that. Yeah. What is it? The uh, algorithm works algorithms. and all that stuff. So I thought that was pretty cool that they gave us what I was actually wondering about. <laughs> it's listener question time. So our listener question this week is... About Southern traditions in weddings. There you go. She goes, we want to have a very traditional Southern wedding. Are there any Southern traditions that I'm forgetting? We want to show his family from up north Southern charm and hospitality and demonstrate how great it really can be down here. And how kind and loving the people can be here. What are some good ways to incorporate Southern hospitality into your whole experience? I can tell you, I looked this up. It was fun. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> because stuff that I thought was popular all around is not really popular all around. <laughs> I know. Isn't it funny? You find out, <laughs> nope, that's not the case. And the first one is a groom's cake. I thought everyone had a groom's cake, but apparently it's a Southern thing. Well, I had never heard of it until, I can't remember when it was, but I had never heard of it until I did hear about it in in, in Texas. Yeah. I mean, we always had a groom's cake, and usually the wedding cake was either a white or a yellow cake, mm-hmm. you know, a vanilla or yellow cake. And it had buttercream frosting on it, yep. and it had maybe some <laughs> filling in it. And, of course, you had to have buttercream. We didn't use fondant. So, because <laughs> fondant's bleh. And then the groom's cake was either chocolate or... Some other kind of flavor, German chocolate, red velvet. You can do a bleeding armadillo cake. 
like on Steel Magnolias, because, you know, that's my favorite movie, and you can bring your Aunt Weeza out in it, how she hacked into that thing and made it look like it was bleeding, so. I don't know if I would do that, but, you know, you could if you wanted to. <laughs> um, a bridesmaid luncheon. Every Southern girl knows that we like to lunch. Even some of these Northern girls like to lunch. Um, you can host a bridesmaid luncheon for some great time with your maid of honor and your and your maids. And I would even say uh, mothers if, mm -hmm. if they're there too. Yeah. And it's also a good time to give them their gifts. I mean, if you didn't have like a bachelor or you had your bachelorette party weeks ago or something like that and you didn't have their gifts yet, this is a great time to give them their gifts. Especially if they're going to wear it the day of the wedding. Exactly. Like if you bought them jewelry. Mm -hmm. House parties. They are put together to basically put all your wedding things together. Like you're doing the, if you have goodie bags or a Southern wedding always had Jordan almond bags. Let yeah. me just tell you that. Okay. <laughs> we always had Jordan almonds in a bag somewhere. They were either on the table in a, in a bowl or, but there was always Jordan almonds at a wedding. So you need somebody to assemble those. Mm -hmm. So you make a house party. So you have bridesmaids and you designate other friends and family to come in and do all these activities. It could also be a shower or a bachelorette party. Just to let you know. Um, you could do a pounding party. This is a housewarming party. And this, this, we had this happen to us when we moved to Texas. We moved to a brand new house. Not a brand new house. Brand new to us house. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened was everybody came over and they brought food. And filled our fridge and our pantry full of stuff so that we would have something to start out on. The tradition is friends and family give newlyweds pantry staples like flour and sugar, butter, things like that. It comes from you usually send those over by the pound. Like you send them a right. pound of sugar, a pound of flour, a pound of butter. I wouldn't say a pound of eggs because usually you send dozens of eggs. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> But that's where the name comes from. I, I, I totally know what this is. Yeah. I think it's a really nice thing to do. And it's kind of like a diaper party for somebody mm -hmm. who's having a second or third child. You bring a bunch of diapers to them because, you know, that's the main thing they're going to be needing. <laughs> it's the same kind of uh, idea is just preparing them for what's to come. Mm -hmm. A ribbon cake pool. This is kind of fun. Yeah. I've never heard of this yeah. myself. It's basically a New Orleans tradition. Okay. So at the shower or luncheon, bridesmaids or single friends pull ribbons attached to charms that are inside the or underneath the cake. You don't have to put them in the cake. You can put them underneath the cake. Each charm indicates a different fortune, like an anchor or a hot air balloon for adventure, a rocking chair for a long life, four leaf clover for luck, you know, the floor de lis, mm -hmm. prosperity. I'm sure there's something in there for fertility. Yeah, I'm sure there yeah. is. <laughs> Keep the spirits away. One of the <laughs> something. <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, go listen to our <laughs> wedding myths and traditions show. You know, the, that's fun. It's yeah. something, you know, it's a cute thing to do for a shower. Mm -hmm. This one I have never heard of, but I can kind of understand it and I would say it's a Kentucky or Mid-South tradition because, you know, it's called Bury the Bourbon Bottle, which now you can kind of think it's from Kentucky or yeah. Mid-South, Tennessee, Virginia, somewhere around in there. If you spot a soon-to-be bride or groom sneaking up to their wedding ceremony site with a bottle of bourbon, don't expect them to see them carrying glasses. Look for a shovel. Tradition directs couples to bury a bottle of bourbon upside down at their ceremony site to ensure a rain-free event. And once the ceremony concludes, hopefully it's a dry ceremony, mm -hmm. the married duo dig up the bourbon and share it with their guests. So go bury your baker's mark at your ceremony site. And That's an interesting tradition. <laughs> I don't know if our listener will actually do that, but... <laughs> So she was asking about hospitality to demonstrate mm -hmm. how nice people can be. I think if you're just yourself, it's that's going to come across. I think another thing would be to to make sure your need their needs are met. Are they thirsty? Is it hot? You know, if they're thirsty and hot, make sure they have fans and and drinks. Mm -hmm. If it's cold, make sure they have something to bundle up in, you know. Just make sure their needs are met and 
and they'll be happy. They'll they'll see it. They'll see it. Just spread that Southern hospitality all around. Mm -hmm. What do you need? Let me help you. Can I give you some food? Are you thirsty? (laughs) You know, let me take care of you. That's that's the kind of thing. And I would delegate your bridesmaids Mm -hmm. to also extend that courtesy so that, you know, your guests and and your your new family will see how nice it is. Hopefully that will help. (laughs) All right. So we made it through this whole episode. And I believe it's for the third time. (laughs) I believe it's. Hey, like I said, things happen. Mm -hmm. And with with podcasting, it happens more than, you know, (laughs) (laughs) not just us. I promise you your other favorite podcasts. They've had to go through this, too. Yeah. They just don't make fun of it like we do. (laughs) I used to record everything onto my computer. And I had lost so many shows that way that I now don't do that. I We have been very lucky. <laughs> Shannon records her side. I record my, my side, which is called a double ender. And then mm. I put it all together and it, it's just been working out great as long as both sides record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes I forget to press that little red button too and we have yeah. to start over. So, you know, you know, it happens. Anyway. All right. So don't forget to check out our wedding timelines and checklist. From ringtavail.com slash checklist. It's two ninety nine. It's a wealth of information. Just check it out. You'll be glad you did. Yeah, and tell your friends. Join our Facebook group from Ring to Vail Wedding Planning Community. We are having a lot of fun over there finding out who's who's getting married when and who has a wedding buddy and all that fun stuff. Questions are being answered. Subscribe to the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Google Play, Stitcher. We've not gotten our Alexa skill yet, but I know it's coming. They're working on it. We'll let you know as soon as that's up and ready to go. And until next time, no stress, no worries. Keep calm and listen on. Music provided by bensound.com. <laughs>